in the history of the Celtics, there are many great moves made because seldom were you in position to have the top draft. So you make the trade to get Bill Russell. You select Larry Bird a year ahead while he was still in college because he was eligible, and he turns out to be one of the great players of all time. Swing a deal with Golden State and get not only Robert Parrish, but the draft rights that turned out to be Kevin McHale. That was a great that, deal. That's, that's one of the great deals of all time, and it, it affects a team for a decade or more. And then you had maneuvered in position several years ago to take Len Bias. That's what with, I was just going to bring up. That has to be maybe the greatest disappointment of your career. I think it was because, you see, people don't realize. They say, oh, you lost Len Bias. He was a great player. We didn't lose Len Bias. We lost Len Bias for 10 years or 12 years. Imagine right now he'd be in his prime. He ODs on cocaine, as everybody knows. It was a big national story. And naturally the question came up, did you know or was there anything to know? How thoroughly did you investigate his background? Because one thing the Celtics are famous for, even in the modern era, is finding guys with that old-time Celtic ethic and shortly after he was drafted with millions of bucks on the table and a chance to come to a great team he killed himself in effect well, let me tell you about Len Bias he came up to my basketball camp I live in Washington I used to go down and watch Maryland practice quite a bit I'd go to dinner with Len Bias Lefty Drizel who was coaching there at the time and once with Len Bias's father I knew him well this was an all-American kid this was a super kid, and uh, no one could ever dream that such a thing would happen to this kid. But what happened was he was so happy. His aim and ambition in life was to play with the Celtics. This is no bull. This is fact. He dreamed that he could play with the Celtics. So then when it came to pass, he got a hold of the wrong guy or the wrong friend or whatever it was, and they OD'd. Now, that month, he was examined by Golden State, the New York Knicks, and the Boston Celtics in physical examination, and he was clean. So who would ever dream that this thing would happen? You run a background check in addition to the drug test. When you're going to make a, a draft choice like that and, and that investment of that choice, you run some kind of check on a guy? Well, you can't. You, you do it up to a point, but what can you find out? Well, it depends. I mean, right now, right at that point, we didn't know whether we were going to get the second pick or the eighth pick. It was a lottery. So you, you go and, and make uh, background checks on 10, 12 guys, it becomes a, quite, a, quite a chore. But what more background check on a guy would you know than what you see and what you feel? I've been with the guy. I know the guy. It's like Larry Bird. We didn't check Larry Bird. We knew what kind of guy Larry Bird was. So the same intuition. Or Kevin McHale. It's the same thing. Same intuition that had served you well before. That's right. And, you, and you're convinced even now that it was a one-time thing. Absolutely, I am. Sometimes they disagree with me, and some people have written that uh, he tried it a few times before. Who knows? I mean, I, I can't say that. But all I know is... Uh, for at least a month before the draft, he was clean. Hello everyone, I spend a lot of time trying to get you guys nice videos, so please subscribe to this page, and please subscribe to my second page. The link to my second page is in the description section. Thank you.